So those are some of the connections between our food systems, our climate, and the environment. But there are also connections between society and the economy. They influence the climate and environment, they influence our food systems, and so on. So let's look at some of the changes in society and the economy that are linked to our food systems as well. This is an unusual map. This is emphasizing that agriculture is a big business, and the coloring of this map shows the value of crop production per hectare, the areas in bright yellow are where we have the most value in terms of agricultural production. So here's a question to you. How many people's livelihoods depend on farming? The agricultural sector employs around 1 billion people, and 2.6 billion people depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. So it's a large part of our economy and society. That development, that expansion of agriculture has been coupled with improvements in technology. We're now able to feed more people per hectare. And this graph is showing that in 1960 it needed one unit of land to produce, let's say, one unit of food. Now in 2010, 2020, we can produce the same amount of food on one third of the land. So we're able to produce much more with the land that we have. So that technology, for example, would have been new, higher yielding varieties improved land and water management, and the increased use of artificial fertilizers, all contributing to that improvement in how much land is needed to produce a certain amount of food. However, as we know, our world is not equal, and so the improvements in technology have not been equally distributed or resulted in equal benefits all around the world. This graph is showing from 1960, if we scaled all the production to one and then looked at the improvements over time to see where the gains were in productivity over time, in different regions we see different rates of gain. Parts of Asia benefited a lot from the Green Revolution. Their yields increased three or four times, whereas parts of Africa did not see anything like the same level of gain. So it hasn't been the same gain everywhere for everyone. The result of this is that whilst we've made big strides and improvements in food security, hunger and malnutrition are still a problem. If we look at this map from 1960, showing how many calories were available per person, those countries in dark blue were doing very well. They were able to supply sufficient food to their population to meet their needs, that utilization and that nutritious value. But some parts of the world, particularly in Latin America, Africa, Asia, were not able to do so at that time. Fast forward now to the last decade, we see a big change. Many of those countries have now increased their ability to provide sufficient food, but it's still not ideal in all parts of the world. Over 800 million people still suffer from hunger, and about 2 billion are malnourished. And whilst we've been making big improvements, as these two maps have shown, this graph shows some of the recent trends which are a bit more concerning. We've been doing a very good job in reducing malnutrition, over the last decade, but the last three, four years have started to see an uptick where now we're seeing more people who are malnourished. So to wrap it up, agriculture is big. It uses half of the world's habitable land. It supports the livelihoods of billions of people. It also makes a substantial contribution to our economies. It produces goods worth billions of dollars or euros every year. And it continues to evolve and develop thanks to technology to meet our demands. But there's a big but. Agriculture threatens our natural resources and our biodiversity through the land use change that has happened. Remember, 50% of our land is now used for agriculture. Much of that natural habitat, those forests and savannas, have now been converted to agriculture. It also contributes to climate change through emissions. As a result, many people are still food insecure, and there are concerns about the ability of our food systems to meet future food demands in a sustainable way.